before what's his name uh, I mean Chris Evans played Captain America there was Reb Brown who played Cap in two movies in the late 70s Brown appeared in guest starring roles in several Universal Studios produced television series including Emergency, Marcus Welby, MD, Kojak, and Rockford Falls. He also appeared as Rebel, a southern boy who has a fight with Ralph Malf in the Happy Days. That was one of my favorite episodes. Pritch, didn't you hear me? I'm gonna smash you, Malf! Pritch, your voice has changed. Rich, your body's changed. What's your leg doing up here? Please don't hurt me, Rebel! I don't want to die! Before we get into it, my name's Tim Frady, aka TV Crazy Man. I'm a writer, artist, and a cartoonist. And hey, if you like classic superhero stories from the 70s and 80s, then check out my new comic book, Liberty Ace, at Amazon. You should see a link to the book in the description below and to the trailer above in the video. And now, back to one of my favorite superheroes, Captain America. I think one of the funnest things of these two movies that is totally ingrained in my memory is the cool theme music. They had the best theme songs and intros back then. Now the costume in the first movie reminds me a little more of the shield from Archie Comics than Captain America, but by the end it looks just like the suit in the comics except for the helmet. Now it's revealed that this was the same costume his father wore. According to Red Brown, in an interview, the reason Captain America wore the helmet in these movies as part of the costume is that the California Highway Patrol insisted upon it. So the studio just integrated it into the costume. Now personally, I think the helmet was fine while he was riding, but he should have taken it off when he was off the bike. I bet if Cap would have went on the series, he would have taken the helmet off eventually. And I bet it would have looked better than the 1990 film version of Cap, but it probably would have looked similar. Now in the first movie, Steve Rogers is a former Marine who's deceased father as a 1940s government agent. His dad had gotten the nickname Captain America from the bad guys, who meant it as mockery due to his dad's patriotic reputation. Coined a nickname for him. Captain America. Captain America? They meant it as a mockery, of course, but in a way, it fit. But it's also revealed that his dad wore the Captain America costume, which would beg the question, what else would you call him but Captain America? If I'm going to be Captain America, I want to be the same Captain America my father was in every way. I don't just want to do the things he did. I want to look the way he did as well. Steve Rogers travels the country in a van because vans were cool in the 70s. A few years later, after the movies, Cap got a van in the comics given to him by the Black Panther, and it contained Cap's motorcycle, just like in the TV movies. See, his van is upgraded in the first movie, so he can launch his supercycle and hide it from view when he's not in action. <laughs> Just like in the comic books, Rogers is an artist and he ends up drawing out his first costume of the first movie. His origin is different in the comic books, but still does revolve around a serum. After an attack on his life makes him critically wounded, he's given a secret serum called the Flag Formula. It stands for Full Latent Ability Gain. Super Soldier Serum from the comics actually sounds better if you ask me. I'm not sure what the name change was about. Now, according to IMDb, Red Brown has said at Comic Cons that there were plans for two crossover movies. One between the 70s TV Spider-Man and Captain America and one between Cap and the TV Hulk. I bet I would have watched those movies a million times back in the day. Now, if they can make that happen today, I would definitely pay to go see that movie. Interestingly enough, Nicholas Hammond, the actor that played Spider-Man on TV, has said he was going to reprise his role as Spider-Man, but in a team-up with the Hulk in a TV movie in 1984, but it was canceled due to budget concerns. Now, it's very likely that a possible team-up between these heroes was always being kicked around early on, but was impaired by CBS not wanting to be the superhero network. Well, we didn't get TV Hulk and Captain America together in a, in a movie, but at least there were a couple of later movies where Brown starred with Lou Ferrigno playing Vietnam War buddies in a pair of action films, Cage in 1989 and Cage 2 in 1994. Now, I have to mention this. After the Captain America movies a few years later, a TV show I watched constantly on my recorded VHS copy was the episode of Miami Vice where Red Brown played a crazed biker that tried to kill Sonny Crockett. Viking Bikers from Hell. It was one of the best episodes from season 3 of Miami Vice by far. Well, it's too bad we'll never know what adventures Captain America would have had if the series would have gotten the green light. I'm sure it would have been a great, memorable, regular series had it been given the chance. 
Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell for future notifications. Uh, hit the like and maybe leave a few comments down below. I really appreciate it. Thanks.